Hey guys, what's up? It's Adam here. In this video, I'd like to go in depth <clears throat> about nuclear reactors and how they work. So, I'm just going to jump right into it. First off, a nuclear reactor is a machine. Well, not a machine, but it is a device that when you put uranium cells into it, uranium cells, the cell that radi radioactive atoms, uranium 2 3. Um, a uranium element goes in and reacts um, by their nuclear fission or nuclear fusion to create energy. That's what's inside a uranium cell. So, in a reactor, uranium cells fuse together. Well, th the atoms inside the uranium shell cell fuse together, creating heat, which heats up water. Because in, in, a, in a reactor, the uranium cell would be around water and the heat produced by that cell would heat up water so the water turns into steam which is pumped out to turbines which spin generators that power cities creates electricity it creates electricity so when it heats up the water steam rises and it's pumped out to generators you know and then it power cities like I demonstrate here these reactors have many pumps that cycle water in and out of the reactor so pumps would um, cycle the water in and out to keep it cool and with the combination of coolant water and coolant cells the reactor maintains a safe temperature so a, cool, a coolant cell would be cells that would either cool the um, uranium cell or stop or slow its activity and as you see here I am generating energy Coolant cells separate the uranium cells so they don't feed off of each other's heat and melt down. That's what a coolant cell does. That's its job. Between each uranium cell, a coolant cell separates each one so they don't touch. They cannot touch or they will melt down. These reactors use the fission nuclear method to power them. Fission is when many uranium atoms split off into more atoms and so on. When atoms split, mass energy is made. That is how I'm generating this energy right here. So, some problems of it. Problems are, you know, after the uranium shell cell is spent or depleted, it is very hard to safely store the depleted cell safely without it harming the environment. It's become quite a problem today. Um, fission energy is very dangerous. And reaction and the reaction process can spiral out of control quickly and throw radioactive particles into the at atmosphere, which is horrible. And that's that's what a meltdown is. Fusion, I think, would be a much safer. Um, we we don't have fusion today because, um, well, I'll get into that later. But the way, well, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? Right now, we're using fission energy. Um, I I think fusion would be much safer because it, it can be stopped and cooled down much easier, and it is easier to store the waste products of it, like the spent cells. It's easier to sell, to store the spent cells of fusion, of the fusion um, energy way. Also, if the conditions are right, fusion reactors can produce little to no waste at all. That means the cells can be reused. They don't have to be stored in um, spots like these, as you see here. <coughs> also, the energy produced by fusion is much higher and more efficient than fission. The react, the reason. Okay, here's what I was trying to say. The reason why we use fission instead of fusion is because it takes less energy to split two atoms in f in fission than it does to fuse two atoms in fit in fusion. And um, that's why fusion reactors have not been developed yet, because they would cost a lot more money and they'd be a lot harder to make. Um, and now I'm going to get into bombs. Fusion bombs or hydrogen bombs create enormous amount of energy and are very destructible. Um, an example would be the largest nuclear explosive, explosive ever detonated the TSAR bomb, which Russia, as you know, Russia made that. And... It was exploded, I think, in 1970-something during the Cold War, but it was the biggest nuclear explosion ever recorded. Um, fission bombs is what reactors use. The fission method are much less are much less powerful. Like, are they're very not as powerful at all, and are no longer used. 
If they are used, they are used by smaller, less wealthy countries. An example is the bomb dropped in Hiroshima. So the first um, nuclear bombs were fission, fission bombs because at the time we didn't know how to fuse atoms and if we did it'd be way too costly and above the budget we had to make a bomb so the first test we ever did was in um, the Manhattan Project which was the project to create the first nuclear bomb and that process the bomb that was being used was a fission bomb um, and like a fission is it takes one huge uranium cell and splits it off into two into more, into more, into more. And that splitting process creates energy, like that. As you see, I died way, way far away from it. So that, those are the two bombs on, we dropped, um, fission bombs, we dropped them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, there's never been, those were the two atomic bombs ever detonated in action. I mean, there's millions of tests, but uh, there's there's never been a recorded fusion bomb dropped onto another country to create harm. There just hasn't. One of the largest United States explosion was a fusion bomb called Charlie Bravo. And that was dropped somewhere in the Manila Islands. And um, I think that was in the 60s, or at the very start of the Cold War. And that was so powerful, it sprayed ash onto the islander's face from seven to eight miles away. And as you see here, this is the kind of hole one of these bombs um, would produce. Well, it'd be a lot larger, but that's just a brief description. So yeah, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like, comment, even subscribe. Until then, peace.